I've owned my Subaru Outback for a little over a year and a half, and I haven't really discussed it much. I think I've only made other one other video on it, but I wanna talk about some of the accessories that I chose to get on my Subaru Outback. And as the title suggests, there is one that I regret, one that I wish I didn't actually have. And I'm going to share that in today's video along with, it's not gonna be all negative, I'm also gonna share the features or the accessories, I should say, that I really enjoy. I've talked about the features in length before, but today is gonna to be focused on the accessories that I chose to get added as, as optional items on my Subaru Outback. So if you were looking at a Subaru, whether it's an Outback or any of our other Subaru models, these accessories are going to be applicable and I'll share my insights and reasons for why I chose them and things that I really enjoy about those additional accessories as well. So if you guys are new to my channel, my name is Alex. I like to share weekly videos all on Subaru related topics. So if you enjoy those kinds of videos, consider clicking that subscribe button down below. And as always, if you guys have any questions, leave those down below. I'll do my best to answer those for you. So just as a quick recap for those who don't know me or didn't know this about me, I purchased this Subaru new, I ordered it from Subaru back when there was incredible shortages. You couldn't actually get a Subaru Outback on the ground. You had to custom order it. And so I did have the opportunity of choosing these accessories. So if you're ever looking at a window sticker, so if you go to a Subaru store and you see this in the window, it'll tell you all the standard equipment, but over to the right, that's what you wanna pay attention to because that's where you're going to see these individual accessories, which if you're ordering it are optional. If it's a car that's already on the ground with these installed, it's, it's not optional. You can try to negotiate that out of it, but those are already on the car they're going to come on the car and many of these when they get sent to subaru they're going to have many of the popular accessories that people want one for example we'll go over today is the all-weather floor liners but there are other accessories here too as an example i chose the rear seat back protector as well the exterior auto dimming mirrors splash guards rear bumper cover trailer hitch wireless charger and cargo net so I have all those accessories added on to my Subaru and I'll share with you the one that I least like and the one that I most regret getting. So the Subaru accessory that I regret getting for my Subaru Outback cost me $344. And that was installed at the factory. So if you ordered this accessory separately and got it installed at a dealership, it's likely going to cost you even more. I don't like the wireless charger and there's two main reasons. One has to do with the space. So there's already not a lot of space up here in front of the shift lever. So here's what mine looks like with the wireless charging pad installed. And then here is another Subaru Outback, same generation. You can see there's a little bit more room, but there's still not a lot of room that we're working with. And then just above that, you have your USB-A and USB-C charge ports. So it's a very snug, very tight space here you can barely fit your phone in there. And if you have one of the larger smartphones, it's, it's very tough to fit it in between here. But that's not my main reason for not liking it. My main reason for not liking it is due to the fact that it doesn't charge very fast and it heats your phone up. So it's a common complaint that I think many other Subaru owners have experienced with their Subaru. And the whole reason that I wanted to get the wireless charging pad to begin with is that starting in 2023 for the Outbacks, the wireless Apple CarPlay Android Auto became available. If you're unfamiliar, the Apple CarPlay Android Auto allows you to connect your phone up here and mirror it up on the display. So you can use apps like navigation, music, or even phone call and text directly from your phone or from your display here without having to have your phone out. And you can just therefore keep your phone in your pocket. You don't have to plug it in. The prior generations have the same option, but you had to plug your phone in to the USB cable right here, which was kind of nice because it simultaneously charges your phone anyways. The wireless charging pad is nice if you're just doing around town driving, because likely your phone is probably already charged up for your daily commute and you won't even need to use it. So if you just need a slow charge or something to maintain charge, you can use this, but it does heat up your phone or at least mine does. And so that's one of the main reasons why I don't like it is because of slow charge and the, the fact that it heats up your phone makes it really hot. I don't like it. I don't use it. I end up just defaulting to using the charge cable instead when we're on long road trips because you're using a lot of power trying to utilize these apps through Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. It's going to it's going to drain your cell phone battery. And therefore, that's whenever the USB-A or USB-C charge cables come in handy instead. So 
This is the one accessory that if you can, I would opt out of it just because it doesn't serve much purpose. If it's not gonna charge very well, you don't have any storage there. You're already taken away from the little bit of storage that is there. So that's the one that I would opt out of. Now we're done with the negative. Let's talk about the accessories that I really enjoy and things that I would highly recommend for anybody. If you don't already have them on your Subaru, definitely consider checking them out. The first accessory that I knew without a doubt I wanted was the all weather floor liners. These usually range somewhere in the $150 range. It includes the front and the rear. So your rear passenger footwell area is covered. And it makes it really nice because whenever you get this dirt and debris or water from people kicking snow or, or water in from their shoes, you can just easily take those liners out. You can hose it off, wash it off and let it dry, put it back in very quickly and easily. So. You get the carpet mats with almost all of the Subaru models. The only one that doesn't come with carpet mats is the wilderness trim. And it actually, wilderness trims come with all weather liners already. So you don't have to buy those extra. And most people just don't do anything with their carpet mats. They leave them in the plastic like I did with mine. For the Outback, at least as it stands right now, even on the base trim level, they come standard with the all weather liner and the cargo area. So you, you're covered there on the rear of the seat you can get what they call a rear seat back protector. So I did add this because when we do have our dog in here or we do have things loaded up in here, whether it's flowers or mulch or something, something that has the ability to get that carpet material dirty, we got that in there. So it's Velcro to the back and very easily to take off and clean if you need to clean that ever, but it's very durable keeps things protected in the cargo area. The next accessory, or really this is a group of accessories is going to be a combination of the interior mirror and the side mirrors. So I upgraded the interior and side mirrors to have auto dimming capabilities. So that way, whenever you have bright lights coming from behind you, not only does your interior mirror automatically dim, but the outside mirror automatically dims. And so that was the main reason why I wanted it, but there are some other really cool features that come standard with this upgraded mirror package. One is the ability to link up your garage door opener. They call it home link. So you can link up to three garage door openers. This is just your power button, by the way, for the auto dimming. And then on the side mirrors, you have what's called approach lighting. It's daylight here, so it's really hard to tell, but that little Subaru logo that looks like it's flashing, it doesn't flash. It's just a, a soft ambient lighting on the outside of the door. So whenever you are approaching the car at night, your keyless entry key fob will detect that when you get nearby, it will light up and shine down on the side of the car, just making it look really cool. It also serves as a functional purpose because you can see better when you're getting in your car at night. If you're curious about the pricing on the interior exterior mirror package, I think it cost me somewhere around the $700 range, but that was installed at the factory. So if you do have a Subaru that doesn't already have that equipment, it would require a technician to install and therefore you'd have labor costs associated with it. But talk to your Subaru retailer, they might be able to help you out on the cost. This next accessory is also one that will cost you around $600 plus dollars. I have the factory, the OEM Subaru two inch trailer hitch. So the reason I got this is not so much for towing, although you can tow with a 2.5 liter Subaru Outback. It's capable of towing up to 2,700 pounds. If you have the turbo option of this, so the Onyx XT, the Limited XT, or even the Wilderness, which comes standard with that XT, which the XT means turbo in the Subaru world, that means that you have additional towing capabilities. So the turbo alternatives to this car can tow up to 3,500 pounds. But again, I don't plan on towing anything in the near future. The main reason I got this is because I like to ride bikes. And so we install the bike rack uh, to the back of this and it makes it really easy when you're traveling. You can just pop those bikes on really quick. I do have a video I plan on doing here soon. Now that it is warming up, it's getting springtime, weather's getting nice. And I do have a video coming out on the hitch setup that I use. So if you're curious about that, stay tuned. So why did I go with the OEM trailer hitch? Cause you can get, there's plenty of aftermarket setups out there. 
And not to say that they are wrong to go with the aftermarket setups, but I'll at least share with you why I went with the OEM setup instead. Well, one is I didn't want to take away from the ground clearance. So I've had the aftermarket setups in the past before and the, the frame or the design of those aftermarket hitches can sit down very low or sometimes I've had them rattle on the exhaust. And so it, it, does, it looks bad, it can rub whenever you're going in and out of certain parking lots or depending on how much weight you have on the back. And so it can take away from your ground clearance and I didn't want to take away from the ground clearance after all. That's what Subaru's known for, their standard 8.7 inches of ground clearance on all their SUVs. And so if we do ever take this, I don't plan on taking it necessarily off-roading, but when we go hiking or camping, sometimes you're on roads where you've got bikes on the back or you've got things on a luggage rack on the back and you don't want that stuff scraping on the ground or getting caught on things. So, um, And it came with this nice little rubber uh, cap. So you can just pop that in whenever you're not using it. and it's integrated into the rear bumper here, so it just it looks a lot better than uh, than I think the aftermarket setup looks like. And then lastly, I didn't find this out until later, but uh, I was told that this actually th so this is bolted to the rear subframe, and so it's right there behind that rear bumper. And with that, it adds structural integrity. Nobody ever wants to be involved in an accident, but if you're ever involved in an accident, you don't want your trailer hitch getting shoved into the the car or damaging something. This trailer hitch is designed to work with the car. So if you do get involved in a rear end collision, it, it adds structural integrity to the back of the car. So that's another nice benefit that I actually found out after the fact for having this OEM trailer hitch. The last accessory I wanna show you guys that I really enjoy having is going to be the cargo net. Now, at $75 for a cargo net, I, you know, I thought, okay, yeah, that's a bit steep, but I did want to share that this is not just your regular cargo net. And I, I didn't find that out until later. This is two in one. So you have one cargo net on the top and you have one on the back side. Let me fold it out and show you what this looks like. So here's what it looks like when you have it out. This is the main reason I bought it. Uh, I think back to when we went on vacation one year, when you have these power lift gates, they're really convenient. But if you have your back hatch loaded up with suitcases, beach balls, or whatever, as soon as you open that, you can't control things that are going to fall out. And so this little net right here will keep that in place, keep things from falling out. But also I like the fact that it has a little pocket in there. So that was my main reason for buying it. So that was, that was justified enough for me to purchase this particular OEM Subaru cargo net. But later I found out that this has a second cargo net in it and it straps over the back here. So if you have things in the middle that you don't want moving, whether it's a suitcase or, or something else, you can strap it down so it connects on the four ends to keep things intact. So I thought that was really neat and it makes me really happy that I have the Subaru cargo net now. Quick side note, if you don't have the cargo net now, you do have to get these little hooks installed. So depending on the model, some of them have a little bit of a different variation. Some of them may already have this, but I know on the Outback, they don't come pre-installed with this. And I didn't install this myself. Like I said, it was done at the factory, but it can very easily be done at any Subaru store and you can have them do it. I don't know exactly what the cost is, but it should be pretty minimal because all it requires them to do is to install these hooks in the side for your net. So that covers it for my Subaru accessories on my 2023 Subaru Outback. I hope you guys found some valuable information and some insight in this video if you are indeed looking at a Subaru yourself and trying to figure out which accessories make the most sense for you personally. Hope you have a great day. Leave comments down below with any questions you have and I will see you in the next one.